The topic of the next talk is biofeedback technology, presented by Marco Ferrec. Marco has been um, a pioneer in this, um, in this field, and uh, he has been communicating um, about the topic across the globe. Marco, welcome to HIPCON. Thank you very much. The, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. Um, today I'm going to talk about biofeedback. I've been talking a lot about biofeedback technology recently in a couple of a couple last years, but today I will share some new information uh, with you guys. It will be the, the first time. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about biofeedback technology and its use in the educational system. Um, well, mostly because you, uh, technology, the more we go into the future, is becoming cheaper, uh, more available, and um, actually one of the main goals for us is to make the technology that, like 10 years ago, that was really, really expensive, to make it affordable for like um, every household, for every f family. So, just to tell you something about my background. Um, actually, my main area is ADHD. So um, I myself have uh, ADHD, and I found out when I was 22 years old uh, about this condition, and it kind of changed my life because I could explain to myself all the problems that I had while I was in high school. I was really, I was one of the worst students in my whole ge generation, so school was no good for uh, for me and after the realization of ADHD uh, I I started I, I felt an urge to share my message and the message was simply that it's more about being different than being disordered and that usually education system itself it's actually it's not flexible it does not promote creativity and everything so uh, I started to do a lot of talks about ADHD to, to teach teachers how to deal with kids with ADHD. And ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, so I founded the nonprofit organization. It's Buzhenye for Understanding ADHD. It's in Zagreb, in Croatia. Uh, and, uh, and then I, later on, I became vice president of ADHD Europe. Um, and I became the founder and CEO of Neurotech, uh, which is the company based in Zagreb. And uh, my first ever um, uh, connection with biofeedback technology was around 10 years ago, while I was in London. I was in London, it was ADHD conference, and they were showing some high-tech technology that could be used for treatment of ADHD, for diminishing symptoms of autism, dyslexia, and, and so on. And this is one of the first gadgets that was on the market. It was like a helmet in which you had some sensors that were on, on your skull, uh, or actually on, on your head, and they could read your uh, brain, wave, brain waves. Uh, to make it short, this helmet through those sensors it could detect whether you are focused or not and based on that you were playing games so if you were focused you were achieving a lot of uh, goals if not um, if you're not focused you you wouldn't be doing so so well so so basically um, it was like 10 years ago and this uh, this is actually not our product it's American product that we simply sell in uh, Croatia. Um, but like seven or eight years ago, they upgraded this product by removing the helmet and by placing it into the hand. So, uh, which is really, really uh, good. It, now it looks like this. It's a very small size. It has it has these three main sensors that you have to put on the skin, wherever on your body, it doesn't matter, but as long as it's on the skin. And those sensors through your skin can detect whether you are really focused or whether you are not. And 
the whole basic principle is that you are playing a game. For example, you play by watching a fish swim in the sea. And if you are focused, the fish goes down. If you are not focused, the fish go up to the surface. Uh, and your main goal is to, to put the fish all the way down and uh, the principle is the same with all the games that there is. So if the more I am focused, the better I will get in the, in the game. And the research has shown that by playing those type of games, uh, you can really, really um, uh, train your focus. As you are training, for example, you go to the fitness, you have some weights, you are, you are doing the exercise, the muscle will become bigger and stronger. The same you can do with your, actually, with, with your focus. And that technology was quite well successful uh, for the areas like ADHD, for autism, for dyslexia, from, for, other, for some brain uh, damaged um, uh, things. For example, when somebody would have an uh, accident or whatever, so they uh, would have impairment in memory, uh, short-term memory. And it's been shown that through this technology you can really improve, improve that. So that's why we started, like five years ago, we started to, actually seven years ago, we started to work with this technology in uh, Croatia. Uh, so the, what can help? This biofeedback technology can help actually in uh, focus increase, uh, successfully ignoring distractions. Uh, it can, you can become better in your memory, uh, in finishing tasks. It's specifically important for, for example, people with ADHD or that have a like, really short attention, attention span or they are really impulsive, they can't do something for longer periods of time. This really helps you to have better controls over your thoughts and to really hold a specific thoughts for a longer period of time, which increases the productivity and everything else. Uh, you become better in organization, visual and auditory processing, uh, better in social skills, and also hand-eye coordination can be Im improved. Uh, also, uh, the training of, with this technology it goes uh, to the longer periods of task performing, better self-confidence, better focus, better school achievement, increase in social interactions, lower impulsive control, uh, better text understanding and better planning. So they're actually uh, improving your focus actually influences many, many areas of, of your life. Um, it's six plus years, which means from six years until 99, if you are 100, no more. No, I'm just kidding. It's like, uh, what, what it's for the human brain, uh, whether it has something, some difficulties or whether it doesn't. Uh, the training needs to be done minimum two times per week, which means there are uh, two times per 30 minute sessions. And first results are being seen between 15 and 20 sessions. So if you do it once, it doesn't mean that it will, the improvement will be shown, but after some, some time. An average 40 to 80 sessions for long-lasting results, which is also very good because we have a promising long-lasting results, not only when somebody is playing, playing that. Um, so I'm just sh making it very short, just for you guys to, to see and to understand that it's it actually it's a really great tool for training your cognitive functions. And this is very specific in mental health area. So mental health meaning uh, children with ADHD, children with autism, uh, dyslexia. Uh, it can even help in Parkinson disease, in Alzheimer, uh, in, in, in all those areas, it can really improve someone. So uh, it is a really great tool for cognitive uh, functions, but actually one of our ideas is to make it even broader, not only for those that are having some problems, but for everyone, really everyone. Um, and so, like five years ago, we started to import this product into uh, Croatia. And it started quite 
I mean, it wasn't slowly, but you know, many clinics use it, or many organizations, health centers, hospitals, and one of the things that I'm most proud of is that by now we have 18 national schools in Croatia that are using biofeedback technology. Um, and I, I, I like to call it like a revolution in small, um, and why? Well, mostly because uh, when a school is using its technology, that means that therapy and rehabilitation process is being done inside of the school within the walls of that same building. Because usually when somebody is having a problem, the problem appears after some time uh, the child is being directed to some testing. Probably they are giving the labels, you have this type of disorder, and after that disorder they are shown to some therapy through which they are doing some therapy sessions. And this whole process can last for a months and months. So it's really unnecessary a long process and it negatively affects the children. Uh, so idea is actually why not put all of that within the within the walls of the of the schools. Uh, so far, those 18 schools, the feedback is uh, is actually really really good. Uh, we have some technical um, technical difficulties in those schools, not because of this biofeedback, but, but only because the school system is, is so old, is so obsolete that, that um, the ad administrative work is actually slowing down the use of this biofeedback technology. So actually we are working with the schools to make it more e efficient. Um, so what we actually see that this technology is actually entering the educational uh, system. There is becoming a huge, huge need for, for this. And my observation is that in the future, within five years, that every school, I'm, I'm going to talk about Croatia, I don't know the, but about the other countries, that every school will be working with biofeedback technology. I'm not saying every city, but really every, every school. Uh, which I believe can actually revolutionize the, uh, the school system, not only in Croatia, but I believe also in other areas. Um, the first affected by, by this biofeedback movement, I would say, is uh, actually Slovenia. We have like four schools in Slo Slovenia already working. Um, in other countries, they are using this technology, but it's only in clinics and something that is separate from the school. Uh, I don't have to tell that, that this biofeedback industry and these variable devices, it's an exponentially growing industry. In 2014, it was worth 3 billion US dollars. And today, and this today, I mean like 2017, it's worth more than 75 billion US dollars. So we have more and more interest in, in that. Um, so the last sentence is, however, this product is not the best fit for schools. I mean, it is. It really, uh, um, it really does give really good results. But the problem with this technology, this American product, is that it can be improved. It can be really, really uh, improved in many areas. I'm not saying it can be improved to to make more efficient treatment. No, it's, it's, do, it's doing its job. But for example, it's a closed system. It's not open source. And uh, other people cannot give their input into this. Um, and other, other things which I will cover really, really soon. Uh, so that's why uh, me and my team, we have been doing some brainstorming, some thinking about it, and actually we we kind of we haven't built it yet but it's almost here a new product that would be upgraded version of this one and it would look something like this although the visuals are not still um it's not the final version there are still still some things that i think it could be better but for the first step i think we are doing quite well um, as you can see there's no name because we still haven't figured out what is what are we going to to call it, but definitely uh, how it will look like and what 
what kind of impact will it have, for example, in the educational system? I have 45 minutes left, I, I see. <laughs> uh, so no, no name yet. Uh, school use, it means, it, means um, it will be used uh, like we will build a platform only for schools, like a big school app, app that will be implemented into the computers and uh, into the cell phones uh, only for the, for the school. So this system will be used for all students, not only for students that have certain um, disabilities or problems or differences in the school, but for, for actually for, uh, for everyone. And this curriculum, as you see, the idea is actually to, to implement this biofeedback technology as a, so, as a form of a subject within the school. So for example, we have a subject in biology, we have a um, chemistry, we have a math, we have a physical activity, uh, and also to put a new one, new subject, and that will be a subject of mental activity, through which all students are training through this biofeedback technology, are training their cognitive um, capabilities, cognitive functions. So it will be actually, idea is to actually put a new, new form of subject so that every student in one week spends at least like 60 minutes on this, with this technology, training, uh, training their cognitive uh, functions, which could help not only with those that ha have spe specific problems, but also those that are, um, are already super perfect as they, they are. Um, so the idea is to have this main platform, main app, through which we will connect. We'll have three main connections, student, parents and expert. Uh, so even the students will have an app on their phone or does have to be on the phone, but the parent will have the, the, the app together with the expert. An expert will direct the training process of that students with the help of the parent. So it will be all connected. The parent will be able to see the results of the student. Um, experts will also monitor the whole process. Um, and also there will be different games for specific cognitive area, around 12 or 15, 15 games, and each game will be used only for specific cognitive uh, area. Uh, also, um, what can be also uh, done through, through this is, um, for, for example, we have been l looking at the cost of one of these devices, which is not very cheap, but, um, and we have managed to, to actually put the cost so that, for example, with the cost of, of one of these, it can be used one at a time. After 30 minute session, an, a, another student. So, like in one hour, two students could be used with this. But we, we, we actually managed to see the cost that with the cost of one of these, we could actually be covering the. With one of these, we could be covering 30 students with one of these at the, at the same time. Um, and there will be different type of uh, financial mo mo monetary system through which we could actually charge uh, some of the, through apps, there, there, there could be some, some charging, so we can compensate the, some financial loss, let's say. So, let's say a normal day, 30 students in a class, they are wearing these devices, and what we can actually also see is their focus throughout the day. So we'll be able to see in what part of the day they have been highly focused and in which part of the day they have been least, least focused. And for example, let's say after the physical exercise, we can see that with the specific kids, their focus increase. So we will understand and know that these children need more physical exercise. So with this technolo technology, we will have a better insight into the, actually into the capabilities of the students and actually adjust the environment that could be um, um, bringing better potential from, from those uh, kids. And one of the main important things, 
main important thing, and it is the research. It is the research. I'm, I really am in love with the research. Why? Because it's very important, and it's some sort of communication with the outer pu public. And idea is to do the national research of this. So we're supposed to start the national research with this product now in September, but we had some problems with um, uh, with um, uh, uh, some tables that are gathering data. Uh, so we postponed this research, I believe, for the next year. So, but I can for sure say that within two years, um, we will have the research of this technology uh, on a national level. We will cooperate with all those schools, we will cooperate with all those clinics, and we will have uh, specific data. How much does this help? In which areas does this help? An idea is to have the ongoing research, even with this product, to have the ongoing research of the benefits of this technology, so that this technology is actually all the time being updated, changing, and everything. And of course, open source is, um, I'd say, very interesting. So we have the app for the schools, and we'll have also app for the private use. And idea is to have actually the open source thing, so that people around the globe, around the planet, can actually build their own apps, build their own games, build their own uh, things that will be uh, that will be run by your level of attention and why not allowing someone else across the planet to actually build or create a better app a better game that we have thought of so I'm in a huge favor of this open source and I believe by doing this we will also be able to create a whole new market of games or apps or whatever that could be controlled by your level of attention. So, for example, a kid can actually play, uh, play specific games, but only if they are focused. And one of the main important things is that their eyes have to be on the screen. So we will also do the eye tracking, the better phones, the better eye tracking uh, through the camera will, will be so that we make sure that they're actually really watching um, into the screen. Uh, and there will be also many in-app purchases in cooperation with other, with other e experts. So for example, somebody decides to buy this watch, uh, they can also, within the app, they can also purchase or buy uh, monitoring or advice from one of our experts or someone else, else's expert that will help determine which game they will monitor the progress of, of that child and actually um, you can have a really quality um, therapy like within within your home that will build your uh, uh, build your brain uh, and the conclusion is that, that actually we are now in the mode of looking for investor, investors. We have, we have some uh, hardware engineers, but we're also looking for some software engineers uh, to, to jo join our team. Uh, and, um, and yes, I think I have said enough. If there will be some other questions, I'm more than happy to, to listen. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Do you have any questions? Yeah. I haven't seen who. Yeah. Okay, I guess yeah. this is work now. This works now. Yeah. Uh, so, um, a ADHD is a medical condition, right? Yeah. So, so sort of, because I, I, I I'm not uh, uh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, so that's why I'm asking this. Uh, after those forty plus hours of uh, or or uh, treatments with uh, gaming, 
under the helmet and everything. And you said that the, the results are long lasting. Uh, uh, do you know, uh, uh, are those children that were trained like that, uh, do they still, uh, uh, are they still diagnosed with ADHD or not? Because, you know, this, this is like fuzzy for me, I, I'm, I'm, but uh, I'm curious about it. Well, first of all, um, this device that I brought you, it's called actually Play Attention, it's an American product. It's, it's actually not 100% uh, effective. None of the therapy is 100% effective. Whoever says that it's 100% effective, they are lying to you. So, so it, it's like 90%. So that means that out of, I don't know, 10 children, seven children probably, or th two or three children won't have any effect. So the worst case scenario is that they won't have any uh, positive uh, uh, outcome. So there is no s negative side effects, which is very, re really uh, good. Um, and now, uh, well, they will definitely diminish the symptoms, but, uh, but actually I'm very active in um, ADHD Europe. It's a national organization and I'm very pro neurodiversity, which means that um, that we are actually trying to bring the society to look at the difference, to, to look at certain disorders as a difference, not as a disorder. So that when we have a child with certain uh, label, with certain disorder, we don't try to change that child. Or we don't try as much to change the brain of the child. We actually try to see where that child is, to see the environment and to in adjust the environment to the needs of that child. And once the environment is fully flexible, accepting the differences, the needs, ideas, the creativity, the impulsivity of that child, and if the problem still persists, then we can activate this um, ADHD uh, thing and then trying to treat it in, in, that, in that way. So I'm actually not not thinking about that question at, at, at all. I think it will come, come to its uh, point. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Over here. The microphone. Sorry. Now it's working, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding the sensors that you, uh, you use for this, because you're detecting attention, uh, which generally means that you need to have alpha waves and uh, beta brain waves in comparisons. Mm -hmm. Or uh, how do you detect that from the human skin? I have no idea. <laughs> yes, we are actually not actually directly detecting those brain waves. We are actually uh, just monitoring the sensitivity of, of the skin. For example, if the brain is in attentive mode, it 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 um, it uh, brings down our body through our skin a specific um, level of of frequency and those sensors can de detect that. So actually, directly, those sensors are not truly monitoring our focus, but still are, are monitoring our biology of our, of our bo body. And with specific patterns of that biology, it's very, very similar to our focus and concentration. And actually, um, it, it is actually quite r reliable to tell at a specific moment if the person is focused or not. So when we see you are focused, it's actually, I would say, I, I don't, actually we haven't, like 90 or 80%, it will be more true that it really is that person focused than they are, they are not. And it's, it's one of the, I would say, greatest thing because we, to, to have some positive impact on, on our focus and on our well-being, we, we really don't need as much using those uh, neurofeedback uh, devices that uh, sensor have to be put on the on the head it has its own um, 
benefits, and I, I think it's, it's definitely great. But with this technology, it's actually make the whole process more simplified. But is it accurate? Because you're tracking EMG, not EAG. Uh, well, w actually, what we are actually most interested in is the outcome. So when we do the questionnaire at the beginning, with the specific symptoms and problems of the child, and after four or three months period, we do the same, uh, the same survey. And then we measure the data. We, question the, um, we do the questionnaire with the parents, we do the questionnaire with the teachers, and then we see, okay, let's see if that has benefited. And uh, uh, so far, the, the results has been really, really positive. But we haven't done a research on a national level, which I believe we'll be definitely be doing at the beginning of the next uh, school, school year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Actually, I, I saw some more hands. Yeah, I had the same question, but now maybe I can okay. uh, throw another one. Did you try it with turned off device? Uh, sorry, did I try this on myself? No, with turned off device. Uh, Is it just placebo effect? Um, if it's, uh, well, definitely, um, we, uh, there definitely there might be some of the effects of the placebo. Recently, there have been some very interesting research based on the neurofeedback te technology. Uh, there have shown the placebo effect quite, quite strong, but, um, but definitely what you are actually, when you're playing those games, in real time, you are looking at your focus uh, in, in, really, in, in real time. And um, it kind of still reminds you, it kind of shows you um, become, you become more aware of the sensation and of the feeling when you are focused as opposed to when you are not. And when you become more aware, you automatically put yourself into that focused uh, state, which means you really can train yourself become better and better in, in that uh, area. Um, as I said, we need uh, research, but as you can see, like 18 sc schools in Croatia have started to, to work with that, many clinics, and uh, so there is definitely a high percentage of su success. Uh, I still, right now, can go into the depth of some numbers, but we are still working on, on that. Actually, we are working on building uh, really something like this and, and make like really a long, large scale of uh, research, and hopefully in like two years from now, we will have some really important data. And if those data show that, um, by the scientific community show that this really helps, I would say that we are beginning on, the, on a big scale revolution in, in the educational system, because I don't know anyone that would say something logically and say that this technology uh, is not placed in the, in the school, so. Thank you. Any more questions? I guess not. Thank you, Marco, once again. Thank you. Thank you.